اوكي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما تعلمنا وزدنا بفضلك علما وتعليما إنك على كل شيء قدير So we're coming to the end of the book إن شاء الله تعالى وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال انظروا إلى من أسفل منكم ولا تنظروا إلى من هو فوقكم فهو أجدر ألا تزروا نعمة الله right? Reason 5082 for not being on social media So the Prophet said Look at those who are below you Look at those people who are dying Look at those people who are sick Look at those people who are poor Look at those people who have learning difficulties Look at those people who are uh, disabled Look at those people who are disfigured Look at those people who um, Whatever it is Right, and if you do that, and don't look at the people who are supermodels, don't look at the people who are super intelligent, don't look at the people who are super popular, don't look at the people who are wealthy, because it is better so as not to disdain the blessings of Allah. So this is the opposite of television, right? So when we watch television, we're saying, "Sami'na wa asayna," I hear and I disobey, because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, the Prophet Sallam told us, "Look at poor people." And we're looking at wealthy people. Because everyone on TV has more money than me. And everyone on social media has more money than me. Everyone on social media is better looking than me. Everyone on social media is more popular than me. Everyone on social media is more happy than me. Everyone on social media is fitter than me. Everyone on social media is whatever it is. right? Because the role of social media and the role of television is to get you to chase after the dunya because it makes money for people. If I can convince you that you will be happy if you look like this person, you will buy this watch. You will sign up for this gym. You will buy this miracle thing that will make you lose weight. You will be whatever it is. So to continue making you continually paranoid that I'm not getting ahead in the dunya. That's the role of television and the role of social media. Right, and so a very, very dangerous thing to do. Right, a very dangerous thing to do because it it warps your sense of reality. Right, you become depressed because I'm continually being told I don't have and they all have, whereas they don't actually have. They're not actually happy. They don't actually have things, and you're not supposed to be looking at those people anyway. You're supposed to be looking at people who are beneath you, poorer, uglier. Uh, weaker, uh, less intelligent, right? And that, and so, to, so that you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the majority of the world. The majority of the world is poor. If you live in California, you you want some of the, of the, what, I don't know, the naught point, I don't know what percentile of the wealthiest people that have ever walked on the face of the earth if you live in California. But yet you see yourself as poor, subhanAllah. And so you disdain the blessings of Allah as opposed to being total non-stop awe of the fact that you have AC, for example, or the fact that you have electricity, right? So get off, don't watch television, get off social media. وعن عبد الله بن الشخير رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال هل لك يا ابن آدم من مالك إلا من مالك إلا ما أكلت فأفنيت ولبست فأبليت وتصدقت فأمضيت So Abdullah ibn Shakhir, he said, the Prophet said, O oh, son of Adam, do you truly own, when you say you own something, do you truly own any of your wealth except that, that which you eat and, that, and, and, then, and then excrete, that which you wear and then wear out, and the charity you have given and then spent? Right? So we have to look very carefully at what is wealth? Like what, is it, what does it mean to own something? What it means to own something is to have used it to please Allah. That means you owned it. Like you sold it. You had Ethereum and you sold it for dollars. You have hard cash in your hand, right? Or you have hard cash in your hand and you sold this for real commodities because one day maybe real, real hard cash is disappearing, right? Because of inflation. So you have a million dollars of hard cash, but in one year you would have lost it. Subhanallah, you've lost money without even 
it changing or moving or anybody taking it from you. So this is the dunya. You have health. What is health if you don't use it for ibadah? That means you're not healthy. What is looks if you don't use it in a halal way? What is intelligence if you don't use it as, for, as, as worship? What is money if you don't spend it on the obligatory and the sunnah? All you have is the opportunities. And all you can do with an opportunity is to turn it into an act of worship. Your life is an opportunity, but it's nothing. You are the poorest of the poor, the most indigent of the indigent, the lowest of the low. If you didn't exchange that opportunity for something that's real, for having done something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu an nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam anhu qal an nadmu no, an, uh, an nadam an nadmu tawbah so he said remorse is repentance i the fact that you did something and you wish you had never ever ever done that and you feel heartbroken by that fact then what this means this means you have tawbah but if you don't regret it right you you think someone thinks back to the good old days right i don't drink anymore but those good old days right that's hard. that's not that's not tawbah then tawbah is from the word tabi to turn to turn back to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so you wish by say yeah allah i wish i could turn back time and never have said what i just said I wish i could turn back time and never have done what i done had done as opposed to I mean, uh, wishing to do this and again reason 5080 gazillion why we should not be watching television because glorifies sin glorifies the haram the believer at best doesn't want to do the haram because there's a punishment but wish he could do the haram because it looks so cool or she could drink or she could do this or she could do that the haram is glor is is uh what's the word not glorified it is uh sensationalized right the only reason I don't do it is because Allah will punish me. As opposed to true iman is the only reason I don't do it is because it's disgusting and Allah hates it. Why would I want to do that? Right? Why would I want to drink? That would cut me off from Allah. Why would I do that? Right. And then just a correction here. So it says Ibn Majah. There's a number. And Bulsiri. So this is a primary hadith source. Right? This is a secondary hadith source. So this is al Bulsiri. I believe he's a student of Ibn Hajar. Right, Ibn Hajar al Asqalani. So we're talking about in the ninth century, tenth century, and uh, so he went through the hadiths. He did a takhrij going through the hadiths that are found in Ibn Majah and not found anywhere else, and he he rated them as being Sahih, Hasan, or Daif. Right. So the source is just Ibn Majah, not Al Busiri. Right. You would say this hadith is Sahih, Hasan, Daif, and then and then reference Busiri, but not uh, um, that's not that's not a primary source. عن ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال عينان لا تمسهما النار عين بكت من خشية الله وعين باتت تحرس في سبيل الله. So Ibn Abbas رضي الله عنه and the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said there are two eyes that will never be so much as touched by the hellfire. What are they? An eye that cries out of fear of Allah and an eye that stays awake on guard for the sake of Allah, in jihad, right? So somebody doing something like this, you suffered in jihad, it's these eyes, and the Prophet said many things like that. You know, uh, uh, the, the, the smoke, the smoke of hellfire and the dust of jihad, they will never be together. So you're in that difficult situation, fulfilling a communal obligation, protecting a people, uh, fighting against oppressors, etc. Uh, you are now uh, uh, you know, protected from the hellfire. And similarly, so an eye that did something haram and genuinely cried to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet told us, he said, cry. And if you can't cry, at least pretend to cry. At least like try and try and make yourself cry. Right? Because we have to have hearts. Right? And then just some uh, final chapter here. Comprehensive uh, lessons from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. An Ibn Abbas in the Radiallahu An Anhuma Qal Kuntu Khalfa Rasulullahi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Yoman Fakala Ya Gulamu in the Ualimo Kalimatin Yahfa the Lah, Yahfa the Lah, the Jidhu to Jahak. 
إذا سألت فاسأل الله وإذا استعنت فاستعن بالله وعلم أن الأمة لو اجتمعت على أن ينفعوك بشيء لم ينفعوك إلا بشيء قد كتب الله قد قد كتبه الله لك ولو اجتمعوا على أن يضروك بشيء لم يضروك إلا بشيء قد كتبه الله عليك ورفعت الأقلام وجفت الصحف. So Ibn Abbas, who, you know, he was, I don't know, maybe he was 10, year, 10, 11, 12 at that time. He said, once I was behind the Messenger of Allah وسلم, on a horse or a donkey, all right, or a camel, right? I'm, I was riding behind the Prophet وسلم. He said, oh, young boy, I'll teach you some mighty words. Protect the commands of Allah. Literally, keep Allah. I keep to what Allah is asking to do and he'll protect you. Protect the commands of Allah and he, you will find him in front of you. Right? This is the whole point of Islam, to be with Allah, ma'iyat Allah. How can you be with Allah? To always prefer Allah to yourself. Whenever there's a choice, to, should I do what I want or should I do what Allah wants? You always prefer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You keep to that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show himself to you, inwardly and outwardly. Right? And then you free yourself from all problems and all difficulties. Whenever you ask, ask Allah. So yeah, you can, you can ask somebody. Doctor, doctor, please save my child. Knowing that the doctor is dead and the child is dead and you are dead. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone is al hayyul qayyum, is a living, yeah, self-sustaining. And he is the only one that can harm and benefit. So it's very important. It does, the, the, the desperation and what that desperation makes you do does come out here, right? When the person sees that everybody around me is just a puppet of Allah, right? The way that you ask somebody and the desperation you feel towards them is not going to be the same when you see that they're just, they're nobody there. Right, you know, you're trying to open, for example, you're trying to open a door, knowing that the door cannot be opened by you or by the key. It can only be opened by Allah. Are you going to kick the door when when the door when the key doesn't work? Are you going to try and turn the key really really hard? You're going to take the normal means that Allah wants you to take. Put the key in, turn it this way, turn it that way, try this, try that. But you're not going to freak out because the key does not open the door, and the door doesn't get you inside the house. And getting you in this house does not achieve your goals. Allah achieves your goals, and Allah achieves everything. So there's a, there's a level of calm and tranquility. When you ask, turn your heart away from that thing and turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Key thing, whenever you want anything, turn your heart away from it and turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, uh, and when you, when you ask, ask Allah. When you seek help, seek help from Allah. Right? That doesn't mean that outwardly you don't turn, but inwardly. Right? And no, let's say you were studying for exams, uh, trying to pay off a debt, right? Work 12 hours, knowing that the 12 hours has no effect on whether you make money or not. So if you lost all your money, I don't really care. The reason I'm doing the 12 hours is to show my loyalty to Allah. Not that I'm actually going to pay the debts off. It's irrelevant. The debts will be paid off or not paid off, depending on how Allah wants. But I'm going to do, I'm just doing this as a bad. I'm just doing this as an act of worship. Whether the results are achieved or not, it doesn't matter. I cannot memorize this formula. I can't pass this test, it doesn't matter. I don't really care about passing the test or not. I care about doing what Allah loves. And Allah wants me to work hard. So I'm working hard. Whether I achieve goal, it doesn't matter, right? You know, an, an, an example of this, uh, to share just practical thing, finishing high school, don't check your exam results. Why? Well, because, at least as how I was in England anyway, the university you're applying for, they already see your exam results. So you, you're not, you don't need, you don't practically need to do anything with them. So why do you need to find out? I'm just really want to know. Why do you really want to know? Oh, because if they're good, what, what, what does that mean? The exam was in how you reacted to the, to the revising and the studying and to the exam. Whether you got A's or B's or C's or D's, that's irrelevant. Why are you even checking? You're checking because you have this attachment. Don't be attached. Let go of it totally. Don't even check. Don't even know. Open it. If you don't need that piece of paper, shred it immediately. Throw it away, Toad. I don't need to know. Don't need to know. Don't care. I only care about Allah. And if you open it, push your heart away from it. And say, yeah, okay. Your mom and dad will see. Okay, fine. Sure. And the trepidation starts coming in. What are the grades? Turn away totally. Don't care about it. I'm not interested. Proposal for marriage. What are they going to say? This or that. Turn your away totally. They say yes. They say no. I don't know. Uh, work, are they going to accept me? They're not going to accept me. Is the child 
Is the child okay or not the child okay? Turn away totally. Before the doctor comes and tells you if your child's okay or not okay, turn totally away from every single thing. Turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the cure and nobody else can cure. Now you can find out whether they're okay or not. Everything else is irrelevant. Right? So you keep your heart with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whenever you seek help, seek help in Allah and know that if the entire world collaborated to try and benefit you in any way, right? They would not be able to bring benefit to you except in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already decreed for you. You're with Allah. He's the one who makes people smile and he's the one who makes people cry. He's the he is the sole cause of everything. La ilaha illallah. No hope apart from Allah. No fear apart from Allah. No aspiration apart from Allah. No dread apart from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, uh, uh, nothing you look and esteem. You're not, you're not, you know, wow, that person has a cool car. Wow, that person's amazing. Wow, that person can do this. There's no wow factor in anything apart from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? That's why people who are empty, they have to do things like horror films and uh, extreme sports, but you don't need to do extreme stuff because you're dealing with Allah. He's already way beyond extreme. And know that if. The entire world collaborated to try and harm you in any way. They would not be able to harm you with anything except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already decreed for you. The pens of destiny have already been lifted and the pages have already dried. Everything is just the pantomime around you, a play of light and dark around you that, you know, what is it? Uh, um, uh, I can't remember the soliloquy of Macbeth, something like a, you know, it's just a, petty fool that struts his thief on stage and right? it's like he's just doing a dumb show everything around you is just a pantomime deal with Allah Allah's the haq he's the real everything else is just showbiz or whatever it is وعن أبي ذر رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال اتق الله حيث ما كنت وأتبع السيئة الحسنة تمحها وخالق الناس بخلق حسن Three principles. Fear Allah in whatever situation you're in, whichever place. It doesn't matter you're, you're with religious people. So you make sure your woman, for example, I'm around religious people, make sure my sleeves are going down to my wrists. I'm not around religious people, it doesn't matter. I'm around religious people, make sure I do the sunnahs. I'm not around religious people, don't do the sunnahs. I'm around this situation. I'm in the masjid in front of the Kaaba. Oh, don't say that word in front of that. People say, don't cuss inside a masjid. What is it? Halal to cuss outside of a masjid? <laughs> right? There's, there's, right, there's no difference. Don't say that Sheikh so and so is here. Right? What are you talking about? There's no difference. You're with Allah. You're with Allah. Fear Allah. Know Allah. Want to recognize Allah's rights in whatever situation you're in. And if you do something that's shameful and you think Subhanallah, why did I do that? Follow it up immediately with something good. Demhuha and wipe it out. Don't worry. Don't get caught up in the past. You should regret the past and say, I wish I could go back and change it. But don't be caught up in the past. And deal with people in a beautiful, nice way. Right. He said, I asked him about comprehensive Goodness. What is this comprehensive, all expansive goodness? He says, Hasan Khulaq, being a nice person, but you're easy to deal with. You forgive and forget. Generous. Right. And it doesn't mean with people you don't know. Everybody is polite to people they don't know. It means when you close the doors and when you're at home, when you talk to your brother, your sister, your husband, your wife, your kid who's annoying you. Right. That's, this is where it starts. Otherwise, everything else is just whatever. Uh, while sin is that which pricks your conscience and you would hate people to discover, right? So, for example, you do something, you say something, or you speak in a certain way and realize the, the Zoom microphone is still on. And you feel really embarrassed. Why do you feel embarrassed? Because what you said is not what you'd want people to hear you say. Okay, so does that mean it's good or bad? It means it's bad. So there are certain things you can just... Right? What is it? Uh, uh, Jiminy, Jiminy Cricket, what's his name? 
right? Everybody should have that thing, the voice inside. And, I, and where does this develop? This develops with your relationship with your shuyukh. Right? You've developed a relationship where somebody has helped you and now you have that inner voice that they wouldn't do that. Why would they do that? وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال من جلس في مجلس فكثر فيه لغطه فقال قبل أن يقوم من مجلسه ذلك سبحان الله وب... سبحانك الله وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك إلا غفر له ما كان في مجلس ذلك So whoever sits in a gathering in which there is much un unbecoming speech not necessarily speech, Haram, messing around, and one and one says before getting up from that sitting, glory, glory be, glory be you, glory be to you, Allah, with your praise. I bear witness that there is no god but you. Seek your forgiveness and I turn back to you. This person will be forgiven for whatever took place in that gathering. وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال كلمتان خفيفتان على اللسان ثقيلتان في الميزان حبيبتان إلى الرحمن سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله العظيم and Abu Rayyad and Rais the Prophet said there are two phrases that are very light on the tongues not difficult to say and very heavy on the scales judgment day and beloved to the Umar for they are glory, glory be to Allah and praise to him Glory be to Allah the Great. Subhana Rabbi, Subhanallah, wa bihamdi, Subhana Rabbi Alim. Right. And then the book continues with biographies of the Sahaba, etc. And we will not read that, inshallah. And we'll continue next week um, with Al Adab al Mufrad by Imam al Bukhari. Um, I'm just going to take an opportunity to go on to that. So I'm going to pause the recording and start again, actually, because um, I want to talk about these things, inshallah.